like that you just want to emulate be yourself but emulate as much of the things that that they uh just anything that he did a shoulder and just see what he was doing and how he did it and, and really paid attention to uh coach driscoll would send out a weekly email to all the wives to tell them our our tentative schedule now at the top of that schedule he would always say everything is subject to change without prior approval okay and because our schedule was always changing but he's seven so when he left i took over doing that you know it's just i mean just did you see all these little things did and when he was gone and if they being done you missed it and people who are willing to let you and, and look at first it's very awkward because you feel like you're bugging someone or you're you're bothering them but but along the way any all great coaches want to keep getting better so you're adding value to their life and they're learning from you at the same time you just happen to be learn have so much i just had so much more to learn that i was taking everything in and and maybe i was adding a little value to his life Well, I'm sure you you added value to his life. Uh, you know, when you talk about you never jogged before you met Coach, but then <laughs> you would tag along. You know, after you guys had a couple co cups of coffee in the office, and then you hit you know a three or four mile jog. But I just I appreciate that about you because you know the stature where you are now. You don't just slip on a banana peel and land into you know associate head coaching job at a place like Baylor on the heels of a national championship. It takes the willingness on, on your part to learn and to realize that you don't, you don't know everything. You don't know what you don't know. And when you find guys that obviously have kind of the it factor, you do what you can to latch onto that. So I always appreciated that in your interviews, you know, how candid you are about that process. And hopefully uh, I know I learned from it and hopefully these young guys are doing the same thing. You know, on that note, you talk about, gathering as much information as possible. Uh, you know, a great quote by you that I read, you said, you know, you might miss on a really good kid and he'll beat you twice a year. But if you take the wrong kid, he beats you every day. And, you know, the detailed nature of how you recruit players, that's well documented. You know, how you took a chance on a kid like Torian Prince from San Antonio. And he was, you know, you just had that gut feeling. He's the type of dude that was willing to come off the bench for three years. Next thing you know, he's a pro, um, you know, in a segue to that, in terms of what you're looking for from future coaches on your staff, when you're going to be a head coach, talk to us about some of the little things that you keep mental notes on now of young coaches that you come across. Um, man, there's a lot of a little things that, that you look for and, and, uh, number one is they've got to be a people person, someone who knows how to connect and is willing to connect um, with others. Um, and because the, the business basketball coaching is the basketball part of things is so, so little, you know, the most of it is about how are you going to deal with people? You know, how are you going to build relationships? How are you going to build trust? And, you know, and so you've got to be a people person. You, you, you got to be flexible, you know, and uh, someone who's willing to do anything. When I was a, a, a youth pastor, uh, my the guy who was my pastor, well, my youth pastor growing up, when I first got a youth pastor job and I, I was coaching basketball, but I was a youth pastor at the church, I asked for his advice. He said, what is it that, you know, I, I, some things that are helped me. And he said, um, he said that, Whenever your boss asks you to do something, even if you don't think you can do it, you don't have the ability, like you the knowledge or whatever, just say yes and then figure out a way, right? And so um, he would say that he would come in on a Sunday night and our the senior pastor would not be feeling good. And he would be like, he'd say, hey, do you have a word? And uh, the, the associate pastor at the time who was above him would be like, oh, no, I don't know if I have anything because he was afraid. And uh, Brother Mike would say, 
I got you. I got you, Pastor Granberry. And then he would run back in his office and he just started praying, oh God, give me something, you know? And, but he was always like, I, I got it. So um, I want dude to like, when I ask him to do stuff, like, because Co Coach Drew says, Coach Jack, can you get this done? It's, yeah, I got you, Coach. And it doesn't matter if I know how to do it or if I, whatever's going on, I got it. I'm gonna figure it out, okay? And I, I like guys and, and I do this with our GAs. I like the guys who I say, hey, man, can you get this done for me? And they're like, I, I got you, coach. And then they go figure it out. And then they tell me a story later on about how they had to call 10 people to figure out what I was talking about. And, you know, but but just like when, when people ask you to do stuff, man, say, man, I got you. And then figure it out. And in the figuring out, you learn things. You learn things about yourself and and you show that you're, you're willing to take a risk, you know. And uh, so, so I want guys who are people – People, uh, you know, they, they know how to build relationships and guys who are, you know, they're just willing to be the, the, the guy who gets it done for you, you know. And so th those are the two things that I, I would say that I look for. I, in that, you see the loyalty in the person. You see their 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 humbleness. They're, they're willing to do whatever it is that you ask them to do. And, and that's what it takes. You got to be a you got to have some humility about you, man. And no job is too small, you know, and, uh, that that's so important. Oh, I think that's such that's such great advice, you know, especially uh, hearing about the journey of, of some of your GAs and how uh, it reminds me of another interview that I saw from you. And you were talking about, you know, how during COVID things are different. Right. And we're watching so much film on these guys. You guys uh, end up signing Adam Flagler a guy who had, you know, very little attention coming out of high school. He played at Presbyterian. You watched his film. You, you know, he's a good player. This is a guy, in your opinion, you know, who can hit big time shots. But, you know, in your mind, he kind of had that paper ceiling uh, just from his film. And how you talked about this guy just day after day was so consistent in his practice habits. And then, you know, showing it in a game consistently, how he broke through that paper ceiling and, Talk about how you feel like somebody, whether it's in a GA spot or a young, a young man or woman trying to come up in this business, how can they break through that paper ceiling, some things that they could do maybe to impress a guy like yourself without being asked? You know, a guy, for instance, I know a lot of young coaches, they fret about not having experience recruiting. Well, how could, how could a young coach come in and, and be impressive enough to you to feel like, man, I feel like that guy relates, connects well enough to where he would be a recruiter if he didn't necessarily already have that experience? Well, you know, for me, recruiting is about relationships. So if you show you can build relationships and, and build trust, you can recruit. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's all it boils down to. It's not, there's a difference between recruiting and evaluating. Okay, and so, uh, there, there, so there are some guys who can build relationships, but they can't tell if a guy what his ceiling is. And there's some guys who can tell that, but they have no idea how to build relationships with people. And so uh, there's a difference there. The young men, uh, and I'm going to use uh, like Peyton Freedom, okay, who's now at uh, Grand Canyon with, with Bryce Drew. Uh, Peyton, man, he's uh, come in. He's going to tell you a story. Uh, you know, he, he's going, you know, his, his grandfather is Dale Brown. So I don't know if any of the young guys know who Dale Brown is, but he was – famous coach at LSU. They called him the Reverend. He's got an unbelievable story, just a terrific guy. If you ever want to like call somebody and have a conversation and just gain a whole bunch of knowledge about the game, Coach Brown is the guy. He's just unbelievable, right? Well, Peyton, he's done, I can do it. And he's going to have two or three stories he can tell you about, about something that's going on. He's going to come in and tell you about a kid he watched on on the internet and, and how he knows somebody connected to that person and and this and that I mean so he's just constantly I mean, I mean there's he, he's just like he goes above and beyond I even like one time I think he came over our house and uh he ate some meatloaf right my wife cooks some meatloaf and uh it, it was the best meatloaf he'd ever eaten in his life right and I was like said, brother, you are such a brown loser, you know? And, and, but like right away when I called him out on being a brown loser, he was like, okay, coach, 
I got you. I'm not going to be that dude who goes overboard anymore. And, and so he was coachable, you know, and you see a guy who's coachable, then you say, okay, well, this dude could keep improving. And so, I mean, those are the things guys who are willing to like be vulnerable and put themselves out there and, and just show up. I mean, I had a kid named Jordan Howard. Now, uh, Jordan was a manager and, but he was always around the office. So the fact that he was always around the office, I always gave him more responsibility. By the time Jordan left, he was in charge of like purchasing all of our gear, all of our equipment. I mean, like, yeah, I never worried about anything. Okay. He just, he took care of it. They did actually did like a, a 30 second clip on ESPN on him during one of our games where the camera followed him around and I remember Fran Fischella saying, see that guy right there? He's responsible for everything. They, Baylor, we had nine uniforms from Adidas that year. Baylor never wore the same combination in any game this year. Jordan Howard is the guy who picks it out, takes care of all. But he had, he had a huge responsibility. That was, that was probably a $750,000 responsibility to a grad assistant. Okay. And for the last three years that in, in purchasing and ordering, just picking out what we're wearing shoes everything and i mean just just another guy he runs an edward jones office now okay he could be a coach if he wanted to but that's not what his his calling is but he was just always around the office and because he was always available there was always something else to hand to him to do and then he showed himself being willing to do it and so he got more responsibility and to the point where like coach drew and i we never worried about a thing that jordan did and, and our guys got to the point they understood, like, they if Jordan said it, that's what it was. And so uh, availability, man, just, you know, um, some guys just do what they're asked to do. And some guys look for problems and they say, man, that's, that's the problem. I think I can take care of it. And then, you know, so when the coaches walk by and say, hey, man, we need to get this done. And we got a guy right now named Shiv. And Shiv will be like, coach, it's already done. Already done. You know, and... Uh, and, and Shiv is, is in his second year with us. He traveled, but most guys don't travel as a, as a manager. In the second year, he was a guy you had to have travel, right? He was indispensable because of the work that he did. And so he traveled, he was in the bubble with us. You know, there was only 34 people in the bubble on your program. He was in the bubble as a sophomore in college, okay? And, and like, we're trying to figure out how, how we're going to make sure he stays to be a GA because he made himself indispensable because he solved problems, right? He didn't point out problems, he solved them. And he, he asked you to do something. I'll tell you, Coach Drew stopped film one day to point out that when you ask Shiv to do something, and we're watching film, right, from practice, he pauses it. He says, I want y'all to see this. And Shiv ran from where he was at to where the spot was on the floor to wipe it up or it was to get a ball or whatever it was, Shiv ran to get, and he, and he showed it on film. Watch Shiv's ability, you know what I mean? Just just those types of things, man, they stick out with you. They, they're like, and when, 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 when you're starting a small business and that's what college coaches are doing, right? If, unless you're, you start a big business and you're lucky enough to start the high major level. But when you're, when you're in a, a low to mid major program, it's a small business. And you want trustworthy, dependable, loyal, hardworking guys who are problem solvers for you. And, and guys, who do, they, they stick with you, man. You try to figure out a way to keep those people and create um, jobs for them. So our, our um, I don't know what AD, AD title is, but is uh, Aditya Mahaltra. But AD was a grad assistant and was so valuable that Coach Drew created a position to keep him with the program. And now he's got a full-fledged position. And I mean, we he's he handles like our, our travel and meal budget is right at a million dollars. And he's he handles all that. Plus he oversees the entire budget, which is probably around seven million dollars, seven, eight million dollars. This is a guy who was a grad assistant, made himself indispensable. Okay, so so I, I I mean you guys I don't know where you're at whether you're in college whether you're in high school gonna go into college, man you go find be a manager and and just do 
ev- find everything you can possibly do and, and, and you create your, your energy will create your talent and your energy that will recreate room for you. Now, I don't know if I answered your question, but I talked a lot. No, uh, coach, I, I mean, you answered it so well that I want these guys to understand, you know, first of all, we've got a national championship winning coach personally shouting out graduate assistants, student managers, Peyton Prodhome, Jordan Howard, Shiv, and Aditra uh, Miraltra of you talk about that mentality of having no job too small that that's what why it matters fellas whether you're on this call tonight or you're watching on youtube that's why it matters right because coach tang undeniably is going to be a great head coach high major division one sooner than later and he's he has these guys in mind that you don't make those stories up right so you can make an impact whether you are a high level player it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you start off as a student manager. I was lucky enough to start off as a student manager. I remember wiping up that sweat. But the important part is the guys that matter, the Coach Tangs of the world, they remember that and they value that. Just like every culture, the culture of joy, like you guys talk about at Baylor, Coach, you know, that's what you value. It's about other people before yourself. And when you're willing to get on your knees and wipe up sweat without, without being told, you just see it and you go get it. Right. That's the kind of dudes that coach is talking about with Peyton, Jordan, Shiv and Aditra. You can be that guy. Right. That's that's work ethic. Um, everybody has that in them. Um, the last of our starting five here, coach, uh, I, I really appreciate you being willing to, you know, you almost gave us a, a starting five there of the guys that are willing to to exemplify, exemplify no job too small. Another thing I would ask you now, you know, I try to live it whatever I'm talking on these videos about my brief coaching experience with these young guys. That's why I reached out to you to say, um, you know, this is a big time guy. This is a guy who's going to be a high major head coach, but he's also a person. I mean, this is a, a down to earth, you know, godly man who wants to help. So why not reach out to him? Next thing you know, it's a week, two weeks later, we're on a zoom call, right? So of all the wonderful people, whether they're high major D three coaches, it doesn't matter. Everybody that you know, in the coaching business. Um, if you don't mind, if you could give us kind of a starting five of guys you think that would be great mentors for young coaches, you know, possibilities of names that, that young guys like, like the guys in attendance tonight could, could reach out to. Wow. Um, well, Alvin Brooks on our staff, uh, he started a, a program, a group called Be Ready. And it was, simply to help younger coaches okay so um, re- reach reaching out to alvin would be uh incredible getting on the be ready calls um zoom calls would be awesome um so I'm, my my wife is on the phone right now so i apologize but um you know that 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 be ready call man i mean coach brooks and the time he invests in it to help hit every aspect of what we do on the coaching level, whether it's mental health for players, um, individual development, scheduling, uh, interviewing. Um, I mean, just, just all those things, building, you know, relationships with coaches and uh, the coach Alvin Brooks, the third man, I, I would definitely he'd be a guy right there. Um, uh, let's see. Amir Abdul Rahim. Uh, Amir is the head coach at Kennesaw State and just a guy that, I mean, whenever you need something, he makes himself available, you know, and uh, that's a guy who's been, you know, an assistant at multiple levels. And, you know, now he's he's got his own head coaching program there and uh, just 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 been under a bunch of different guys and been super successful and, you know, had a brother that played in the NBA and. You know, I mean, just he's he's had a, a bunch of life experiences that I think would be valuable. Um, Yurk Malagi at the University of Texas. Yurk started out as a manager in, uh, at Howard University, and he was a, an AAU coach, ran his own AAU program. And, I mean, he's worked himself through the ranks. And, I mean, you know, one, one of the best coaches, regardless of, uh, titles or whatever in America, uh, but also one of the best people, 
you know, and um, just 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 a guy who's who's always willing to, you know, return a phone call, return a text message, and now he might not hit you right away, but he might call you at an obscure time and hour, um, and and just just to get back with you. But you know, those those three guys I know uh, are always willing to to share. Now, Coach Driscoll is another guy. Now you can't call Coach Driscoll; you got to text him. If you text him. He'll text you back. That's just what he is. He's, he's a text guy. Matt Driscoll at North Florida, just, just an unbelievable human being. And, uh, I mean, you talk about a guy who can he, – he's been at, at multiple levels. He's, he always says he's been fired before. So guy, guys who have been fired, they, they – you know, if you haven't been fired, you're going to be fired one day. That's what he says. All right. And uh, – but because he's been through ups and downs, you know, he can give it to you from multiple perspectives. And uh, and then Coach Dale Brown, and Coach Brown is a retired coach, and this is the thing that retired coaches are the best ones to call, right? Because they love the game of basketball. They love young people. They love to pour into people's lives. And they're not as in demand anymore, so they're around and they're kind of bored. And, and you'd be surprised how many retired coaches right now that if you reached out to them, those guys that get back to you, they, they enjoy talking basketball and sharing experiences with you. And they just, they're just a wealth of knowledge, man. They've forgotten more basketball and more life lessons than, than we know. And so those, those are some guys that I think uh, if you reached out to, that they would respond, they would be willing to help you, and they'd add value to your life. All right, fellas and ladies, anybody watching, you heard it. Heard it here first from Coach Tang himself, you know, five possible people to reach out to that may be willing to help you in your early coaching search. You got Alvin Brooks, uh, Amir Abdul Rahim, um, Yurik Malagai, uh, you got Matthew Driscoll, only text, and then uh, the retired coach, the legend Dale Brown, former head coach at, at Louisiana State. Coach Shaq uh, had Chris Jackson, well, when it was still Chris Jackson. Um, those dudes used to used to light it up down there in yes. Baton Rouge in the early '90s. Uh, I remember watching that Loyal. I think uh, Loyal La Marymount came and played at their place and scored like 155 points on them. Uh, but anyway, Coach, uh, I really, really appreciate you. You know, being willing to entertain the starting five there. Now, fellas, I'm going to open it up. I will briefly introduce these guys to you, Coach, so you have an idea of who you're talking to. Uh, we've got a young man named Anthony Isola. He's a high school senior uh, from the state of New York. He is going to be a freshman next year at the University of South Carolina in Columbia, hoping to be a student manager. Uh, there, there's Esteban Erdodi. He is uh, a college student in New Zealand, uh, hoping to gain some experience and possibly coach in the college ranks in the United States. There's also another high school senior out of the state of Texas named Logan Burks. Uh, he plans to go to the same JUCO where Jimmy Butler was. He wants to go there for two years, get some coaching experience, uh, and then possibly end up, um, you know, um, on a college, you know, on a college program. So, so I'm going to open it up to you guys. Uh, feel free to, to ask what you will of uh, Coach Tang. And Coach, again, we appreciate this. I've got a question. That's, that's all right. Um, the one, one, one of the main things that I really wanted to know was sort of all of us being young is that we're all looking to gain experience and get our foot in the door first. So do you have any specific advice that you, that you did, things that you did when you found out that you wanted to become a basketball coach, Division One? What, what were the first things that, that you did? Was it, you know, get a specific degree or reach out to specific people to, to gain experience? Because, you know, that's, that's where we are in our, in, our, in our life, in our career. And I was wondering if that's things that we can replicate in our, in our journey. No, that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, Esteban, I, I didn't, like, I didn't want to be a Division One coach, right? I just, I love basketball. And I just, you know, I wanted to, to coach. There was a bunch of second graders that I developed a relationship with while I was working at a YMCA. And um, I just started coaching them. And like we did a, a YMCA league and I, I would do practices and um, make up drills and mess up drills and, 
you know, just the, the thing about it is just getting the practice of actually um, being on the floor. So like there's there's got to be a I don't know what we have YMCA's here. I'm sure you have a rec league somewhere around you that has a third grade or a fourth grade or a fifth grade team that needs somebody just just to coach them, whether it's guys or girls. But the experience of being out on the floor and uh, teaching a drill, right, and then learning that, man, I, I can make this drill better if I do this. Because there's a difference between watching someone do a drill and then you actually doing it, right? And, and then starting to develop your coaching voice. You know, so anytime you can coach, anytime you can, like, be out there with young people and, and, and learn – teach them the game and, and learn how, your style and what you want to do. That's, that's the first thing. So I started at a YMCA coaching, you know, second graders. Right. And then, I, I mean, I just really liked it. And I said, well, you know what, I wouldn't mind coaching high school. And, you know, then I got the job at, at Heritage Christian being, it was a small private school that we had one guy who could dribble the basketball and one guy who could shoot. And then the rest of them could play defense. Right. And uh, so we had the, like, hey, I had to help develop guys how to dribble the basketball and, you know, and teach them how to make layups and, you know, and do all of that and still put in an offense and a defense. And, you know, and then you just so you start developing your stuff. And then as that went along, I, I figured out that, man, I, I kind of love the game more than they love the game. So I might need to be around some guys that love the game as much as I do. And, and it grew from there. So you guys are way ahead of where I was. You know, I, I didn't start coaching high school until I was 27, right? So y'all are way ahead of where I'm at. And so, but I would say for me, it was just about teaching the game of basketball and being around it. I just loved it so much. So if you want to learn how to do this thing, it's not about how do I get in at the division one level? It's how do I get at any level and teach the game and start developing my style and how I want to teach the game and how I want to coach and you know, what's effective for me. Great. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Hey, Anthony, have you uh, reached out to Coach Martin or anybody on the staff yet when you go there? Um, I did not reach out to Coach Martin yet, but I did reach out to uh, Coach John Reynolds. Um, I got him from Coach Maddox. I, I haven't heard a response from him yet, though. All right. Well, just, just keep pounding them, man. Keep pounding. When you get there on campus, go by the basketball office and find out somebody on that staff is the one who's in charge of hiring managers, right, to, to work and always looking for good managers and, and just be persistent. Be persistent. And, and even on the days, like, like sometimes different schools do it differently, but like we have a, a rotation. So like we might have like, you know, six freshman managers and two show up each day, you know, and, and they rotate. So they might come a couple of times a week, but it's that, it's that guy who shows up every day when, even when he's not scheduled, he just stands on the wall, man, puts a towel on his shoulder and says, there's anything I can do. I don't care. I'm not getting paid. You know, whatever. I'm just, I'm here. You know, that's the guy that 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 separates himself. So uh, don't don't be afraid to go in that office, man, and uh, find out who that coach is and and who the guy is. And sometimes it's an operations guy, so it may not be. But but don't worry about titles because everybody in that office wants to be a coach. Okay, yeah. so you just you know find out and find out how you can help and how you can volunteer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So Logan, you're heading to Tyler. Y'all on mute, buddy. Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to Tyler. To uh, that's where I'm originally from in Texas. Okay. All right. Are you gonna? Have you reached out to Coach Marquis? Uh, no, sir. I, I've been. I, that's what I was gonna ask you. Was how do you think is the best way to like go at it? Like, do I start yeah. emailing now before I get on campus? Or yeah, yes. You you email you Coach Marquis. Yeah, email Coach Marquis. Or or his son, whichever yeah, one. Yeah, his you, son. You, is, yeah. Yeah, you, you just, just I know let that him whole, know. Yeah. Let him let him know you're coming to campus and you want to volunteer, you want to help out with the program, however, and then but but you got to follow through, 
right? You can, yes, sir. You know, 100%. follow up and follow through. That, 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 that's the big thing. Make yourself available and then you, you become valuable to those guys and then they, they sell you. I get as many calls for guys who want to be managers, guys who want to be GAs from coaches as I do for, for players. Okay. And so like when, so when a coach calls me and says, I got a manager, he's the best I've ever had. Right. That, 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 that goes a long way. And that, that's, that's, and, and guys do that. All right. I want you to know it's important to them. They want to help the people that help their program. Yes, sir. hundred percent. I appreciate the words, the advice. No problem. I've got another question there, so if that's all right. Um, sure. Given my situation being overseas in New Zealand, it makes, um, I guess, my pathway a little bit different and you could say more difficult. But I was wondering if you have any experience with, you know, coaches that either from New Zealand or international or sort of um, any advice you would have? Because obviously college basketball isn't really a thing here. It's more professional. And like you said, I, I definitely the first action would be would be looking to to volunteer the the local clubs, but also if there's any sort of international camps or stuff like that that, that you know of people or that you have any advice that I can sort of put my foot foot in the door. Well, I I would say like I mean, I coach FIBA basketball, and the the guys who play FIBA. Um, at a young age, I, I think they turn out to be better college players because they get so many, they, they coach, they play so many possessions, you know, 24 second shot clock on offensive rebound goes back to 13. I mean, it's just, they're just so many possessions that they get, right? Well, it's the same thing with coaching. If you volunteer for one of those programs, you're, you're, you're getting, you're seeing as many offensive and defensive possessions in one game as someone who coaches high school, that as they see in four games, all right? So you volunteering and seeing how they do it at the pro level and seeing how a pro coach puts in offense and, and overseas, you know, I mean, they're, they're running a little different offense. And, and so you're going to add great value if you can get in with one of those organizations and then they can become a reference for you as you, you know, want to go to grad school, you know, and, and link up with the program. You know, learning learning the analytical side of things from, from the professional standpoint, that that's going to help you. That's going to give you an advantage over all these other guys, right? So I, I would I would say that would be that's that's the route I would want to go because if I got a call from a um, from a professional coach in New Zealand or from one of the national team coaches, then I, I'm automatically in my head thinking, well, if I help this young fella then it gives me an in what we're being able to recruit in New Zealand, which might, yeah. you know, you, you know what I mean? Cause like everybody like can recruit Texas and everybody can recruit, you know, um, New York and California, but not, not everyone can recruit New Zealand. Right. So mm -hmm. you, you have, you have a distinct advantage if you can uh, make yourself valuable to the national team or to one of the prof professional teams there. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Hey, Coach, I got one more for you. When uh, when Cedric Hensley dropped 101 points in a game, how, how how did that go down? I mean, was the other team just sitting back in a zone the whole time or what? No, the the, the other team, they, they were really bad, first of all. And said, normally when we played a team like that, my my starters, my, my probably my first eight or nine guys would only play like the first half. Okay, but Cedric was getting ready to have surgery and was going to be out for two weeks. And so he asked, Coach, can I play longer this game since I'm be out for two weeks? I said, sure. And so I was let him, I mean, the first half, he had like 50 points. And uh, our guys just kept giving him the ball because they knew that he's going to be out. They wanted him to have a big game. And, um, well, when the second half, when he got rolling again, the, the coach on the other team was, they started, they were keeping the score. They knew how many points he had. And I was going to take him out. And the coach was like, leave him in. And so I was like, okay. And our guys kept throwing him the ball and he kept scoring. And so it was, it, it was a pretty great feat. Uh, took a lot of flack for it. I, I wouldn't change it, you know, um, so. 
No, I love that. I love that. You know, it's like you talk about these great feats in uh, in coaching, and you're one of the very few that I've been able to to talk to who has now has that national championship experience under his belt. Right? We were all little boys in the driveway at the park shooting. You know, hitting that last second shot to win the national championship. I guess my question for you is, how does it feel in the aftermath, a few weeks after winning that national championship as a coach? Is it everything you thought it would be? Um, yeah, okay. So I, I want to make this real clear that that winning the national, like, you know, some people like think when you, like it become, it winning a championship or whatever it is, right? Um, it's like this ultimate goal. And I remember Tom Brady after winning, you know, I think it was three Super Bowls. And by the age of, I think he was less than 30 years old. And he said to himself, there's got to be more to it than this. You know, and I don't know if you ever saw that interview, you know, it's just, there's got to be more to it than this. And um, I guess he was looking for that to complete it. Okay, I, I'm not looking for a championship to complete me. My life is, is complete because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, and uh, I mean, I have great joy in how I live my life because I understand it's a greater purpose than winning basketball games. But winning that championship was like unbelievable because God gave us a platform now to be able to share his gospel. Like you wouldn't have called me, emailed me to ask me to be on here if we had lost the game. You wouldn't have said, hey, Coach Tang, I know you lost the championship game, but we'd really like you on the Zoom call, right? That's not happening, okay? And so I'm on here because we won. And God, it's cool that God chose this group of guys and this group of coaches, you know, because he knew we would honor him with it. And so, um, so yes, I'm still floating. Okay. Yes, it is really cool getting up every morning and thinking, man, we won this thing. You know, it's cool listening to, I heard somebody in an interview compare our defense to the UNLV team, you know, and that's like to me, Georgetown back in the day and UNLV were the two teams that you just feared. Like you didn't want to be on the floor. You, you was afraid to dribble against, you know, Gene Banks and Mark Jackson and, you know, just, just those guys, you know, uh, man, and Stacy Ogman and, you know, Greg Anthony and, you know, the, the uh, just, and for somebody to compare us to them, that was like, that kind of just blew me away. And uh, so it's, it's really cool. Well, I, you know, we, we have, to, it goes without saying, but you were such an instrumental piece uh, and especially helping to construct that defense, you know, philosophically, how you guys smother people. And, you know, one thing I will say, coach, I agree with you. Um, I think that the, the kind of tag value, the sparkle of the national championship does illuminate your name a little bit, but do, doing my research on you, you know, reading about learning about how, how you're such a quality human being, you know, when you adopted the young men, when you were a high school coach uh, as a single guy in your late twenties and, you know, giving your life kind of to your profession and praying to God to say, hey, you know, I'm going to give you kind of these first close to 30 years, and then I hope that you'll bless me with the woman of my dreams. And that happened for you. Like, that's the good stuff. That's where, I mean, I, I didn't get married till I was 34. I was to that point where, you know how it is. I'm coaching 17 hours a day at a low major, just trying to get this thing done, hoping to get to the, the NCAA tournament is kind of like the national championship at that level. And I was happy to do it. But then an angel appears in your life, and all of a sudden life is different. So those, those miracles do happen. And I think I agree with you. I think that the platform is kind of what, where God intervened here to, to allow people like yourself, like coach drew and the, the wonderful young men that you coach to accomplish something like that for a bigger purpose. And I think, you know, hopefully these guys are feeling those, those vibes from you. Um, I've definitely felt in my research from you all week. And uh, we just, we can't say thank you enough for joining us tonight. This has been a real treasure. Well, Man, I, I tell you, I, I'm just blessed. I never thought, like, I would be doing this, you know, like, having these opportunities, you know. And it's, it's always just been, you know, just about the, the ministry. I, when I was a youth pastor, I would open a church and you'd get 30 kids. And then I would open the gym on a Saturday night and there'd be 70 guys in there. And if you had pizza, 
Yeah. You'd get another 50 <laughs> girls and I figured out real quick you could impact more lives in the gym than you can in a, in a behind a pulpit. And so God just gave us a different um, medium by which to share the gospel. And, you know, and so and, and you, I don't know how people make it in this business without that foundation. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many highs and lows and, and ups and downs and disappointments. You get told no more than you get told yes by the kids that you recruit and, you know, the, you're away from your family and, you know, just, I, I don't know how people do it without out having the foundation, um, some form of a foundation and the foundation that works for me that, that I, I know is, is the foundation of Jesus Christ. And um, so, so that allows me to, to navigate this. And, and I, I, I mean, I have good and bad days and all of that, you know, and highs and lows, but, you know, I know that, who I am and whose I am. Well, it says a lot about you and your character. First, that you would be willing to, to come on and, and share your testimony with us, but but also to stick with it after a day like today, you know, in theory, it's, oh, this guy just won the national championship. Like you said, I'm sure, you know, he's had a tough day. A couple flights got bumped. No, I mean, guys who are watching this, you have to understand, coach went out of his way and contacted me two or three times today to let me know what was going on and was adamant. You know, I said, coach, just no, I, I get it. I totally get it. Let's, let's push this thing. We'll make it, you know, a day that's convenient for you. And he said, no, I gave you my word and I'm going to make this thing happen. So for that, uh, you know, that's the good stuff. That's what I love about coaching. That's what I get my joy now in trying to help these young dudes get there because they get it. You know, this is, this is part of the journey and you've been there. You've been through the hard times. <laughs> You're still going to have some hard days, but now you're reaping all the benefits to be able to share those, those good and bad things with, uh, with these young guys. It's just a blessing. So, you know, I'm hoping we can share, you know, more stories like yourself. And I hope that people watching on YouTube now, you, you feel like, you know, this man a little bit more on a personal level and coach, you've got a fan for life, whether you're a Baylor, but I I'm telling you, I can't wait until you've got your own program. I feel like it's going to be soon. And, uh, it's, it's just, that's super exciting. So always a fan here. Well, thank you all very much for having me on. Um, I got to give a, a shout out to my man, uh, Jareem Dowlin, uh, two-time Conference USA champions at North Texas. If you want a young assistant coach to, to uh, be a mentor and, and to, to watch, he, he does it so different, right? He's a, but he's a people person and he's a relationship builder. He just does it different than everybody else. And I'm telling you guys, you, you should follow him on, on Instagram. He's, he's unbelievable. And, but, but he's just a terrific young coach and, and a connector of people. And so um, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention Dream Dowling. Uh, coach, you've just been a, a source of a plethora of names tonight. I'm going to run down real quick before we get off. We got Alvin Brooks. Amir Abdul Rahim, Yurik Malagai, Matt Driscoll, uh, the retired Dale Brown, uh, Jareem Dowling, uh, you know, Peyton Prodholm, Jordan Howard, Shiv. I don't know Shiv's last name, but Shiv, shout out to you. And then Aditra <laughs> Miraltra. Um, that's what we appreciate about you, that obviously these people have, have made an impact on you, and you're not afraid to share that. And that's why I know that this joy – uh, that, that we talk about around the, the Baylor program. That's, that's real. You know what I mean? We're talking about other people all night. And that's why you guys are where you are 38 and two or whatever it was. I mean, one of the best teams of all time. And you're a big part of that. So again, coach, hey, well, for you, well, for, 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 hey, for you young guys, right. And I, and I know you're going to be managers and GAs. You want to be coaches, right? Um, I just tell you like the, the Phoenix Suns, I think they're tied for the best record in the NBA right now. Three years ago, one of our grad assistants, right, uh, went into management there. He's probably like third in command with the Phoenix Suns. And one of our other grad assistants, one of their top scouts. Okay, so so Ryan Resch and Zach Odmason, right, both guys, um, they babysat my, my dogs and they stayed, you know, they watched my house and, and they, they broke down film and they, I mean, they did everything, ordered polos. They did it all. They did all the little, these guys in the NBA now, okay. With the, the best record in the NBA with the Phoenix Suns, you know, and I, I'm just, so 
I'm just telling you guys, man, you're just, you're just some dedication, hard work, get yourself around good people and just great belief and conviction in, in yourself and, and, and growing in your faith from being where you want to be. All right. If you don't know where you want to be five years from now, you're there. Okay. So you need to have a five year and a 10 year plan. And uh, cause if you don't, then, then you're there, you're, you're right where you're going to be five years from now. Brian, thank you, man. All right, coach, we appreciate you. Good luck the rest of the way. And uh, again, I can't, I can't thank you enough for going out of your way to make this happen tonight and a, a difficult travel day. So thanks again, coach. All right. Y'all have a wonderful night. Yes, sir. Thank you, you coach. Too. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Have a thanks, great night. Guys.